How freaking cool is that, you guys? Look Thank you, Amazon. Appreciate you. What up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We're working on the transmission today, aka the lines for the transmission. But we got to get these things plumbed up. Like I said, we've been trying to get everything plumbed up before we even start the wiring, just so we know what's in the way, what's not. As a matter of fact, I've been waiting on this bad boy just showed up. Uh, this is a handheld uh, tube straightener, I guess you can call it, like hard line. Let me show you, we're actually gonna be doing hard lines today, not soft lines. If you guys are interested in a soft line video, I've already made one of those. I will link it down in the description below. Let me show you what we're working with, the hard line stuff today. Now, as far as cost, it, it's probably gonna cost you a little bit more money to do the hard lines because of the amount of stuff you need to do them. Now, for one, you're gonna need a tube straightener, you got something like this. This is a handheld one. But you can also put this in the vise, but I like the handheld stuff because you can take it to the car, wherever you may need it. You don't need to be stuck in the vise, but we're going to use it in the vise today. And you're going to need, so we're going to be using Earl's fittings today. We're actually, I'll see if I can put down them in the description below. But you're going to need basically these guys here. These are AN fittings, and they're basically, you're going to need a, a, got the nut and an insert. So they sell them separately. These are the inserts and these are the nuts themselves so you're gonna need them both so depending on what you guys are doing just make sure you guys order accordingly but we're doing dash six today with three eighths line now when you order line especially if you're going to be doing some oh your own bends and stuff like that it usually comes in a roll like this obviously for shipping purposes but that's why you need that straightener that's where this guy comes into place so this is the stuff also from Earl's. This is like the olive color, they call it. So we're going to be working with that 3 8 line there. We've got to straighten that out. And then you're also going to need something like this. This guy here um, is really a flaring tool, but there's a lot of different ones out there. This one technically is from East Bay with the Summit attachment, and it actually works. It's kind of cool. Uh, East Bay has the attachment as well, but I believe it was a little bit more money for the AN36 degree flare lines because the ones that you do for like brake lines and tranny lines and stuff like that it's 45 degree flares versus 37 degree flares for a n so we're gonna need that guy to flare our line we're gonna need this guy to straighten our line and then so on and then you're gonna need some welding wire really to mock up the line so let's get started We got this pretty much kind of straightened out that tube as much as we're going to need for now but this is what i mean by get can get a little pricey because if you guys don't have any tube benders any kind of cutters and then you're going to need this bad boy as well just to clean up your cut as well to deburr it so this is kind of where it gets involved but first things first we're going to go ahead and cut the tip off of this first one here and then what we'll end up doing is flaring the very first tip of it and then make our bend i always you always want to try to flare it first before you bend it because sometimes you won't be able to get it inside the actual flaring tool so we're going to go ahead and let's cut this side off real quick and then we'll start there we'll flare it and then we'll make our first bend here is kind of our i told you our welding wire that we're going to kind of use to go off of we put it up to the car in where that line's gonna run and basically give us a good idea on where to bend our tube. Here we have our flaring tool in place with the vise. You're gonna need, definitely need a vise. Um, you're gonna need the right set of dies, obviously 37 degree, 3 eighths die is what we're gonna use. You're gonna place your line here and what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna hit it once with the zero and cause what that'll do, it'll push it in place. You'll hit it once just like that, obviously. And then you'll come back to position one, 3 eighths line, hit it there and then come back position two one last time boom and it's done and then you can pop it out of there check your flare make sure it's good but make sure you guys put your nut on and the insert so don't forget that very important or else you're going to end up having to cut it off and you're also going to need a little bit of grease or some kind of lubricant it really helps with the fitting with the pipe so it doesn't really 
mess up the die as well. Mine's in place with a little bit sticking out there with the log jaw on top slightly, not, I should say not tightly, very loosely. Gonna hit it like that, position it in place to the zero position. Now you can go ahead and tighten this bad boy up. Now you should have a nice 37 degree flare. But the one thing I've seen in the past is uh, once you go to put on this nut right here, it'll get caught right there. Um, so all you could really got to do is just put some sandpaper and just sand around this guy right here a little bit. And that's what I had to do with this one as well. So you can see it struggles a little bit, but if you just kind of work on it, twist it in and it should be just fine. That way your A and nut goes right over it. But just like I said, if it gets caught, Use some sandpaper, sand around that uh, flare a little bit, but it should be ready to go just like that. Now we can start making our bends. Uh, so we're just gonna follow up with our mock-up wire here and then go from there. how freaking cool is that you guys look at this we got a new toy for the garage it's technically a laser engraver but you can also use it to cut like obviously cardboard in this case or very very thin um material but we're using it in in basically as a mock-up slash i don't know what you want to call it um basically like a cnc machine but we're making our parts. Like I said, I've been learning, guys. I've been learning a little bit. Check it out. You know, right here. It's doing its thing. This is the laser program, but let me see if I got the other program. I don't have the other ones pulled up, you guys, but we've been uh, playing with this thing and basically making brackets, designing parts, so to speak. Obviously, still learning the program on how to design even this stuff. But this is kind of what I got going on right now. And I came up with these brackets for this build and we're really basically making them out of cardboard first to make sure all our dimensions are correct. We don't have anything in the way. I've already printed this guy out a few times. If you guys follow me on Instagram at SS Goose, you guys notice I've been playing around with this one. This is the bracket for this guy right here, you know, but, um, and I'll be honest with you guys. I thought I made it one time and I just sent it out to get cut to sand cut sand and and ended up being this guy right here see turn into metal but guess what dimensions were wrong i had a few errors in it and it just wasn't going to work so instead of keep sending it out and getting cut in metal and spending you know money every single time on the material and for them to do it um i decided to get the laser and we do it out of cardboard first uh and that way if there's any issues we address them and cardboard's cheap we don't pay for nothing there's a bunch of boxes out here lying around so now we're printing them out first mock it up and then if everything works good then we can send out to get cut through send cut send but yeah i'm excited you guys so freaking cool look at this thing how cool is that so we'll take those brackets and see if they're gonna work for us for what we're doing back at the car now um we kind of had to stop because we ran out of line or we're going to run out of line i should say um i had a few bends that i didn't like so we had to redo but as far as the cooler goes and the plumbing goes so what we're doing is we're going to come out of the tranny um we're actually going to go through here as a matter of fact let me show you the path first but i'm having an issue already that I don't like because how thick this 3 8 line is. I thought we were gonna be good as a matter of fact, I pull that fitting out uh, to see if we can find an alternative. But that guy there, right? There's not a lot of room here with the 4L 80E for that 90 degree bend. So I'm gonna go see if we can go down to the fitting store, find some banjo fittings, if they even have anything available. And that'll kind of give us a, a 90 right off the bat. And then we can come with the hard line straight down and then what i plan on doing is coming back around here and going through this hole here which is this is the original hole for the lines for the fuel lines so these actually run through the frame back through here and then end up landing 
right there so my idea is to come out through there come here and then we have our quick connect right here you guys these are the lines that we have already made so we have these guys here and then they'll just connect into the guys in the back now i wanted to make a, a quick connect i wouldn't say a quick connect but a disconnect point for service so if you guys ever have to service the radiator or i should say the owner of the car ever has to service the radiator for whatever reason he don't have to remove the entire train line let alone how to even get it out of the frame so we're gonna have that disconnecting point there we come across and then now you come up and now you have your actual lines up top so how this is gonna work is we're gonna obviously come from the tranny right we're gonna come from the tranny and that's this guy here from the tranny into our auxiliary cooler first so we're gonna go into the aux cooler now I don't know if I told you guys how I mounted this guy nothing crazy but we just made a few brackets and spacers but we're gonna come into the aux cooler first and then it'll go through the aux cooler then back out and then now we'll go all the way up top that one will go all the way up top to the radiator in and then it'll do its thing cool once again and then come back out all the way back to the trans so that's kind of how that'll work so it'll come into the aux into the aux back out of the aux and then into the primary aka the radiator and then back out of the radiator and then back to the tranny but like i said i'm probably going to end up having to run to the store you guys to see if we can find some fittings along with some more um 3 8 line because i've noticed that we might have enough to make one run but we're going to end up having a we're not going to be short on line so either way if uh if we can't find any banjo fittings that can that we can use here what i'll probably do is go soft line so we'll probably go soft line because an an fitting will fit in here a soft an fitting but it's the matter of the degree and the angle of that bend for the hard line it just won't work so but i know an an fitting 90 will work so if worse comes to worse you go an fitting soft line through here and then back out to here and then maybe do the same thing here do a junction here and do a hard line through the actual um what do you call it through the actual frame here so if that's that's kind of plan b in a sense so we'll see um uh, i gotta run to the store real quick and see what we can find